<laughs> so, did you guess it? It's me, Tom. Normally, this is where Eric would come in and be, and Eric. But he's actually off doing his own project right now. So you're just stuck with me. Well, I came on this vi video to share with you basketball and math. Now, I've always loved basketball growing up. It's always been my favorite sport. March Madness, favorite time of the year. And math is just my passion. So I decided to combine them both. Look at the mathematical aspects of basketball. More specifically, the angle of release along with your initial velocity. Now, to do this, I, and the reason I'm doing this is because everybody always told me, oh, shoot with more arc, shoot with more arc. It gives you your better chance of making it. Well, I figured I'd take a closer look mathematically. Here, let's look. Alright, so how we're going to use this now is by using the equations of motion. We are going to let the horizontal motion of the ball can be modeled by this equation x of t equals x0 plus v0 times the cosine of the angle times t. And let the vertical motion be, uh, of the ball be modeled by the equation y of t equals y of 0 plus v sub 0 times the sine of the angle times t minus 1 half of the gravity t times t squared. Now this is where x and y at 0 are the coordinates of where the ball is thrown, v sub 0 is the initial velocity, where a is the angle of release, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. Alright, so now what we're going to do here is create sliders for our variables. The first variable that we're going to do is look at the distance away that the basket is, so we're going to create this slider here that I am highlighting, and this will be used to make our distance for our basketball hoop by showing these functions of f of x and g of x. That will give you the shape of your hoop. And by using the variable length ba, it allows you to slide your hoop from left and right without any other complications. Alright, so now that your hoop is taken care of, what we're going to want to do now is look at our next slider that I'm going to highlight here. When we create this slider, this will represent the velocity. Now that velocity is going to be the initial velocity, not the velocity all the way through. From there then, we're going to look at creating the circle here that I highlighted, put two points on that circle, and construct an angle. Now this angle will be a variable where you could move point H here and that will allow your degree of release to change from whatever angle you want it to. Now you've taken care of those, you want to do one more slider, the little one there, and that will be represent T. Alright, now that you have heard, what, I need, what we're going to do now is look at our initial equation, the X of T and Y of T that I showed you to start off this slides. Now what you need to do is when you put in the, uh, all the variables, in the right order, what you're going to do is select the x of t first and the y sub t second. Then you're going to go up to measure, and you're going to go to plot as x, y. This will give you a point placed on the graph. Now my point is going to be on 0, 6, because I am looking at a release at about 6 feet high. I do not want to go any higher than that or lower than that, because it's kind of an average. Now when you shoot the ball, you can see that I have too much velocity, initial force, to cover where the, to make this hoop. Therefore I need to edit this velocity down a little bit by moving the change velocity. Now you can move this in any direction and maybe try killing your angle, but I'm going to lower the, the velocity and, shoot, and try shooting again. I'll move my T back to the beginning and hit shoot. Now I do not have enough velocity to get above the hoop. This is where a lot of guess and check will come. Alright, now through guess and check, I want to look at three different distances. A three-pointer, a free throw, and a layup. Now, I've already done this work, so I'm just going to show you that at 45 degrees, you need a velo initial velocity of 28.25 feet. At 60 degrees, 28.65 feet. And at 75 degrees, you need 37.45 feet. Now, when you shoot the ball, you can see that all three of them go in takes longer for some at times, and but it all do go in from their different angles. There you can see how I did use our formulas that we used our initial equations to do this. And notice how that between 45 and 60 degrees, the initial velocity is very similar. Now we're going to do the same thing for a free throw 15 feet away, as opposed to the three-pointer being 20 feet. Now you can see that at 45 degrees, it's 25.66 feet per second. Now at 60 degrees, it's 25.32 feet per second. It actually takes less initial force to make a free throw with a 60 degree angle than a 45 degree angle. 
This, I thought, was very unique to me, especially because you think that the more angle that you put on the elevation, the more fo initial velocity you're going to have to give it. Now, if we want to do a look at a layup, we can look at a layup which I just have at three feet away. Now, when you see this, you can see that at 45 and 60 degrees, it's just not possible. At 75 degrees, using 17.33 feet per second, it does go in the hoop. But why is this not possible? Even when I use an initial velocity of 100 feet per second, which is very unrealistic, you can't actually get the ball above the rim based on the angle. Therefore, layups are actually easier to make because of the fact that you're using less degrees. You can only use certain degrees to make it go in. Therefore, you focus strictly on those degrees at all times. Now what I want to do is compare all our data that we have gathered together. When we look at it, a three-pointer, the free throw, and the layup, that the 45 and 60 degrees are all very similar with how much initial velocity they need. I mean, it doesn't even get away from one full foot. But then when you jump up from 60 to 75 degrees, it goes up 9, 7, and then 17.33 feet because it doesn't matter. And this is important to note because you look at 45 to 60 degrees is a 15 degree jump and 60 to 75 is a 15 degree jump. You think that their velocity would be similar. So as you can see, it's actually not the more arc that gives you a better chance of making it when you're looking at your initial velocity. It's actually shooting at a consistent arc of between 45 and 60 degrees where the initial velocity doesn't vary much where you can actually get away with a little bit of error here and there that would be the angle that you want to shoot at to actually optimize your chance of making your basket. Well, normally this is where me and Eric would be like, ah, until next time we're out of here, but again, I can't use our same catchphrases. So I'm just going to say have a good night, I hope you enjoyed it, I'll see you around.